So I welcome you all to the supernatural youth. Good to be here, always. Good to see your beautiful faces. Even I don't see your faces, but I see you in the spirit. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God bless you, Father. Ooh, 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 ooh. Who can feel the excitement in the air? Interacting with mystics. Wow, 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 wow. <clears throat> Holy Ghost. Holy fire. Thank you, Jesus. You are wonderful. You are awesome. You are glorious. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful is your name. The Facebook, they don't allow us to invite many people again. They cut us down. It's all right, no problem. All well and good. Okay, one more. Telegram, we can cut you guys out. You guys are too special. We call out. Mm -hmm. All right, we are, live. we are right live on all platforms. I welcome you all. I want to appreciate you all for your prayers while we are away in the field. It was um, an awesome time, beautiful time. It was a different kind of um, experience, especially in Vandekia. You know, there, Bruce starts there when Crusades are ending in other places. It was as if we were, we were being initiated to a different kind of um, operation. But we thank God for everything. It all went well and good. We came back. Um, yeah, a little exhausted, but um, the Lord strengthened us even while we were there. And I want to appreciate every single person for your prayers, your your being with us through your substances and all of that. Amen. And I'm sure the, most of you would have loved to partner with us in different ways, but just know that your presence was with us. We had you in our mind and I know you had us in your mind too. And that's just enough. So we appreciate you all. God bless you. All right. So today we are looking at the supernatural UD unveiling. As a matter of fact, for some time now, there's a message that has been ringing in my spirit. And this morning, I wanted to do, um, I want to take it on unscripted, but I discovered that unscripted, we will not have enough time to take that particular message, which is the summon. The Lord is actually gathering. There's a summoning that is going on in the spirit. There's a, there's an intentional hand picking that is, happening right now in the spirit and um, we all need to pay attention to the operations of the spirit in this hour in this season in this timeline in this um, um very very critical moment that we are in we are in the spirit not just in nigeria not just in africa but across the nations of the world um it just like it does that i don't like sharing those kind of videos but there are things happening across the nations where there is so much call for the manifestation of the of the supernatural you know um ooh, having a discussion with um one of my daughters yesterday you know she was telling me how as a matter of fact when i was in vandekia she was so upset she had to send me a message because she was sharing some things with she was sharing something about our identity with somebody 
who, you know, is supposed to be well abreast with the happiness in the spirit. And this person, even with the books that have been written and all of that, was literally arguing even when even the things that are clearly stated and written in scriptures, you know, and um, you know, <laughs> and she tried making the guy understand certain things. And I'm going to just going to start from there. When we talk about unveiling, the, the unveiling, we need to understand the power that is lying or that is, that is lying ahead of us, waiting for us to break into, tap into, walk in, and express in every areas of our lives, in our business lives, in our in our personal lives, in our family lives, in our career path, in our in our finances, in our finances, in our ascensions, in our studies, in our meditations, we just need to understand this. All right. So I'm going to take it nice and cool and easy. And we'll try, the Lord will grant us speed. So, Father, we just thank you for the partnership with time. We thank you for the mystery of time. We thank you because time is an angel. Mm. Oh, yeah. Time is never wasted. Lives may be wasted, but time is never wasted because time is a personality. So we just beckon on time today that you partner with us even as we also partner with you in what we do today. And I pray that by this, there will be a series of unveilings as to bring us into a knowledge that surpasses the things that we have, that either we heaped upon ourselves or we incurred in the form of a wrath. You know, um, sometimes because of the things that are happening in the atmosphere, there is a certain operation of wrath that comes in the form of um, veil. It's like, the truth is veiled or just like Jesus said or the prophecy concerning Jesus in Isaiah says so that in hearing they will hear but they will not they will, they will see but they will not understand they will hear but they will not know so even though they are seeing but they are really not seeing they are blind they are hearing but they are really not hearing because they are deaf so they hear one thing but they say another and that is what you see today. There is so much revelation in the atmosphere, but people are seeing, they are hearing, but they don't understand. They don't have the wisdom. They don't have the ability or the knowledge to walk in what they are seeing and hearing. I pray that for us today, that our hearts will not be veiled, but that our heart will be unveiled. We will not only hear, we will see, and we'll be able to walk in the wisdom to operate everything that we are hearing will be downloaded to us in the name of Jesus. There will be the, the know-how, the knowledge on how to walk in these things that we are, has been unveiled to us, will be made known to us in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right, so let's just go into this. So like I said, I'm going to start from what she was talking about, what I discussed with my daughter yesterday. You know, she said something. She said um, that the way people read Bible, right, they think like, you know, um, we read Bible as a form of duty. And you see, when your Bible reading is just because it's your duty to do so, hey, you will not break through anything. You remain in the, at the level of religion and religious operations. I'm just going to talk today. And in talking, I'm praying that you'll be able to glide and enter into a realm where your eyes will be will begin to see and you begin to understand and your heart will be enlightened. There will be a floodgate of light shining through your heart in the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't mind my voice. I'm still recovering my voice gradually. Okay. Don't worry. After a while, you will see that you just clear out. That's a miracle. What you are seeing, what you are hearing now will soon clear out. It will look like a dream. Yeah. <laughs> so, like I was saying, so she was saying that these people did, and it's what you see amongst the people of God, or the well, people who profess to be children of God. 
We study the Bible, we read books like a duty. It's like a, a chore. It's like something out, mm, if we don't do it, it's like mm, something, something will happen. So you feel good when you read the word. And but, however, but you find that you are struggling with it. So if you're able to read the chapter, you are happy. Oh, ah, thank God I read chapter one chapter of the Bible today. And any day you don't read, you start feeling guilty that, oh, maybe it's because I didn't read the Bible, so that's why this isn't happening or that is happening. Well, listen carefully. The word of God is a life. Remember that the word of God is a person. By him, all things were created. Without him, there is nothing that is in existence that truly exists. So if you understand the word of God like that, then you will approach the word of God. You won't be looking at the Bible or Bible reading. You won't limit your operations to just Bible reading. And you won't see Bible reading as a point of duty that you owe yourself or you owe God. No, you will see it as something. It becomes a fellowship. So it is something that you meditate on. You take a, a, a verse of scripture and you are chewing on it. And through that, you begin to explore. Things begin to open up. Pathways and highways begin to of the spirit begin to open up to you. You begin to glide in the air, in the atmosphere. That singular scripture, that singular scriptural verse will begin to guide you to commune with, with nature, to commune. Like yesterday when we were sharing, when the birds, I was surprised that this morning they did not come and say, oh my God, I missed that fellowship. You know, as I was talking yesterday, the birds, my compound, I, I, I just started hearing sounds of birds and I connected with them and that was just a flu, right? So, and that's how it should be. If you want to break into the supernatural, if you want to understand the supernatural you, there are things that have been unveiled around you. And the moment you start desiring there will be first the unveiling of your heart, then the unveiling of your heart will start unveiling channels of knowledge and channels of breakthrough and understanding unto you. So when we're talking about the unveiling, it, we're talking about the unveiling of the channels of knowledge, channels of um, journeys into realms that makes you who you are. Because until we break into the supernatural being that we are, hmm, a whole lot of things that are happening right now, and I'm just going to share a few. But the Lord will permit me, and he's giving me the go ahead to share it. Like I have some, some, I have some videos. I have quite a number of them. Somebody opened my phone yesterday and said, what? You have videos? Yeah. Well, I don't share them. And there's a reason I don't do that, because if I share them, um, I feel, not I feel, beyond feeling, I know that I'm spreading out that fragrance in the atmosphere. I don't want to do that. Instead, um, I want to make short, I want to make short videos that will get us and awaken and open us up to the supernatural being that we are. One of those videos is in circulation right now is a video of, um, you know, one of that is happening in, in Colorado right um schools in colorado primary schools even crutches they have been taught as a matter of fact they moved the image they moved an image of um uh, there is this um this carved god they moved it into a book library and there they are teaching children to summon spirits, to summon demons, not, let me not, let me call it what it is, to summon demons into themselves. All right? In other words, everything that we were designed to do in righteousness, the devil is so perverse in it, and they are doing it so openly, but believers are the ones who are still ashamed of practicing the supernatural. Why? Because religion shut us in so much that when we talk about practicing these things, it sounds we relegate it to, oh, that is occultic practice. 
Oh, that is witchcraft. Oh, that is sorcery. Oh, that is, please, excuse me. Go through scriptures for crying out loud. Tell me, have you bothered thinking about the mystery of an ax head sinking inside the river and the man of God comes, where did it fall? They showed him, they point to it. And he, instead of saying, okay, to so dip his hand, no, instead he cuts a stick and throws it right on the spot and the ax, the ax head begins to flow. Have you thought about the mystery of walking upon water? Have you thought about the mystery of laying hands upon the eyes and even somebody who did not say he was blind from birth, molding sand and placing on the person's eyes and the person said, go wash. And the person goes to wash. Oh, I see men like trees. And he lays hand again. And the man begins to see. Have you thought about the mystery of one snake swallowing up other snakes? Have you thought about the mystery of the parting of the Red Sea? Have you thought about the mystery of pouring just a jar of water into the Red Sea and the Red Sea becomes blood and all the water in Egypt becomes blood? Have you thought about such mysteries? Have you thought about the mystery of the creation? Have you sat to look into the ocean? Just to sit on a high place and just look into the ocean with a heart of meditation. Within all of those nature, with all of, within all of those things, are locked your true place, your true, the true perspective of your person. Unfortunately, what we have done, we relegated ourselves to our religious blindfold, blindfolded mindset. So when we hear some of these things, the things that, we, that should make us rejoice and dance, we get baffled. And look at, meanwhile, we actually, we see, the natural person, every man, something in you is crying for the supernatural. But the challenge we have is that we are searching for the supernatural in the wrong places. We are looking for the supernatural in pastors. We are looking for the supernatural in meetings. We are looking for the supernatural in... In fact, once you start looking for the, for the supernatural outside of yourself, you are beginning to crave for something else. So what has happened is that we put the pastors under pressure. And the pastors, of course, they don't know any better. So they are beginning to dig their hands into strange things. Why? Because they don't even believe what they are preaching. That is why many will be promising people deliverance. Why they themselves, they need to be delivered. But I thank God that at this time, God is opening our eyes and is opening our ears to come into a place of divine understanding, to come into depth of his person. So this morning, I'm just going to try to unveil one aspect of us because we're talking about the unveiling. And I'm going to take a scripture that we are so conversant with. That is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Say, for we come with unveiled faces to behold as in a mirror the image of the Son of God. And we are transformed to that same image. We are transformed to that same image from glory unto glory. Now, let's look at the image that we are transforming into. Because it's in your ability to understand the image that you are transforming into that will open you up and that will begin to unveil the supernatural you. 
Because as you begin to look to him and as you see him, there is an opening that begins to take place. And there is, it begins to remove all the veils. You see that in Acts chapter 9, the encounter of Saul with the light. When he encountered that great light, that bright light, he said he became blind. In other words, his veil now was pronounced. And he told him, you go to a particular street or street. Say, I'm there. Somebody will come to pray for you. And your eyes will be opened. You see, every time we come in contact with that personality, one of the things that happens is that he begins to remove veils. So when Ananias went and he later said, Brother Paul, Brother Saul, say, and he laid hands on him and he said that scales dropped off his eyes. No man encounters the law without having a season of unveiling in his or her life. And that's where what God is calling us into, where he is bringing us into, is he's bringing us into a time and a season where there will be unveilings, where there will be scales being taken out. And there will be layers of sheets that will be laid off, that will be torn off us. Layers of veils and veils and veils that we have heaped upon ourselves or that men have heaped upon us over the years. So he said, with unveiled faces, for you to be able to walk and to enter into the supernatural you, you must first what? There must first be an unveiling. Some you may want to call on learning. Every time you spend time in God's presence, and it begins, one of the things the Lord will first do to you will be to empty you of the garbage, the things that have been pumped into you, because with those things there, they will be the residual fermenting matters that would disrupt or corrupt the truth that is coming. I have seen people who share powerful, wonderful revelations, but because they did not deal, there was no unveiling, there was no emptying, there was no outpouring, so what was there, they began to do what? They began to heap upon it. There was no alignment. You know, I once watched a movie by Mount Zion. And this particular very tough native doctor, Abalau, as Yorubas call it, they, he, he encountered God, but he was using the gift that he had, all right? He was using it the same way he was using it, the way he was taught from the other side. So he was getting results, but his home, his children, we have been attacked and grandchildren until he was now taught that no, you have to align, you have to submit yourself to God. Now, because he understood the supernatural, even though the, 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 the son is a pastor, but you find that he became more powerful than the song in shutting down the, all, the, 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 the origins of the supernatural. Why? Because 
He understood the operations of the supernatural. So when he got saved, as he began to read scriptures, he saw that, oh, this particular power belongs to me, but I've been using it wrongly. And what he did was that there was an unlearning. He had to remove some of the things that he would normally use because he now discovered that just by the touch of his hand and by the speaking of his words, those things can actually happen. Powers are released. You know, the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. I was watching a movie yesterday, The Legend of the Seeker. <laughs> and as I was watching that movie, you know, one of the things um, that was, the seeker himself did not even know that he is the seeker. And the person that brought him did not teach him anything. So when the when the confessioner came to meet the wizard, permit me to just use all of that, who was supposed to have prepared this boy. So when she brought the book that the, that the seeker we used to destroy the evil in the land, discovered that the wizard had not taught him anything. The boy does not even know. Did not even know who he was. Meanwhile. Even the confessional had already met him. He even saved the confessional. But he did not know who he was. By the time he got to know, and by this time, danger was already locking in. By the time he got to know who he was, and he, got, he had the book in his hand, but he had not read it to know how to wield or control the power that is locked inside him. He just remembered what they told him about the book. So he threw the book inside the fire and destroyed it. Then the confession said, oh, now that you've destroyed the book, how are you going to defeat the enemy? The wizard made, and the, elder, the elderly man said something. And that's what I want us to understand. And I'll come back to studying the Bible again. He says something. He said, look, that it is not so much as what is written in that book, but the person, the ability to discover, to come into alignment with your identity. When you come into, when you come into alignment with your identity, your scroll opens up. I was very privileged on this trip to meet a dear sister whom the Lord has given me as a gift now that, look, the Lord himself, the kind of encounters she's having, most of us who have been studying, you don't even have some of us who have been, we've been talking about the cherubims, we've been talking about the seraphims and all of that. The encounters this person is having, and they would teach her. When she was sharing with us, I was telling them, I said, nobody could have taught her this. And it's not because she's reading Bible. <laughs> it's not because in fact they teach her first then she now goes to the Bible to confirm now when you begin to have such encounters the Bible becomes real it comes alive but if all you do you read Bible, it becomes a struggle. That is why you pick up the Bible and you slip off. Do you know why? You are making it a point of duty, not fellowship. 
So I tell you, for fellowship with the world, if you read them, um, for those of you who have read Dreams and Supernatural Encounters, you will see there that every single one of those dreams will, will awaken the word of God in you. One of the things the unveiling will do to you is that there will be an unveiling of your being as seen from God's perspective. It's like introducing your person to you. And as I said, with unveiled faces, we behold as in a mirror the image of the Son of God and we are transformed to that same image from glory, one level of glory onto another. Because every time what they want to do is to remove the veils, things that have veiled your heart, that have veiled, veiled your mind, that have veiled your thoughts and everything, the, the things that have clouded you. They remove them so that you will see the reason they are showing you the mirror of that image is because they are showing you this is who you are. The unveiling is to bring you to stand before the mirror to show you this is who you are. You thought that the mirror is mirroring you. No, the mirror. <laughs> wow. You, they are showing you what you are reflecting. That is why you don't see yourself in that mirror. You see the image of the Son of God. That is your identity. That is your personality. That is who you are. That is the supernatural you. And that is the person you study. It is when you come in contact with that person that you are looking at in the mirror, which is your true personality, what begins to happen is that you start studying that person. And the study of that person is what unlocks the supernatural you. Is somebody understanding me this morning? I pray that there will be, the unveiling will begin now, even as we speak. Some of you have been taken to classes because I see quite a number of classes. Some of you have been taken to places. Some of you have been taken to chambers. Some of you have been taken into, um, into realms where they showed you people, they showed you images. And you came back, you are talking about the image. But let me show you something. So Lou, if you can help me open the mirror translation of... Um, Second Corinthians chapter, I think it's chapter 12. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 1. I want to show awesome. I'll first read the TPT, or I can, I, can, I can as well read the, let me read the KJV first. So it is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God know it. Listen. It says, such and one caught up in the third heavens. Listen to this. Paul was seeing himself in another dimension. There was a dimensional shift that took place in that realm, and he was transported into the heavenlies. He, he was caught up in the heavens, and his eyes were open, and he recognized a person out there in the realms. And he said, how this person... was caught up 
whether in the body or out of the body, say he cannot tell whether he knew the person in the body or out of the body because he was seeing himself, so he could not tell whether he was watching himself or whether it was another person, whether he was operating in the second person. He said, God knows. Do you know why? As at this time, the light, even though Paul was manifesting in the supernatural, but the light of the supernatural had not yet been fully unveiled. <laughs> now, he said, I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell God know it, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable things. It was as if Paul was watching a movie, but he was actually the one acting the movie. He was caught up, yet he was wondering. You know, some of you may have had this kind of experience where you are inside a thing and it's as if you are outside that thing. You are in it and yet you are out of it because they are making you watch what you are doing. And that is actually how it is when he says that with unveiled faces, we are beholding as in a mirror the image of the Son of God. For those that he did for you, he also did predestinate to be made conform to the image of his Son. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Romans 8.29. To be made conform to the image of his Son. Now, being made conform to the image of his Son is not just in Luke's, it is also in Acts. It's in manifestations. It's in abilities. It's in the working in the supernatural, unveiling the supernatural, manifesting the supernatural, and teaching the supernatural. And also, how do I put it now? You walk in it so much that when you get into places, the supernatural invades and saturates the environment. Hmm. Now, he says, it was cut up into paradise and heard unspeakable, unspeakable words that it, it, it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one, I will glory, yet of myself, I will not glory, but in my infirmities. Why? Because he was still seeing himself in his infirmities. He was still seeing himself because by the time he came back, he saw that man, that image, the son of God, the one who whenever the person, such a person calls, God listens. Can we read that, those two scriptural verses? And um, okay, let me read TPT first before we read mirror. Now look at he said, although I may not accomplish a thing, I need to move on and boast about supernatural visions and revelation, or on a way of the can say supernatural unveilings and visions of the Lord. Someone I'm acquainted, some, uh, someone I'm acquainted with, who is in union with Christ, was swept away 14 years ago in an ecstatic experience. He was taken into the third heaven. I'm not sure if he was in his body or out of his body. God, only God knows. And I know that this man, again, I'm not sure if he was still in his body or taken out of his body, God knows, was caught up in an ecstatic experience and brought into paradise. Now, let me read this note. Say what Paul described as a third heaven is now called paradise. It is possible that Paul is recounting two different experiences or possibly one experience in which he ascended into two levels or two realms of encounters, third heaven and then paradise, seventh heaven. Mm -hmm. the, third the third possibly is that it is one and the same place described with different terms for more 
For more on the term paradise, Hebrew Paradis, Aramic Paradisia, Greek Paradisos. All right. Okay, that's not what I was looking for, actually. Okay. It's a God who was caught up in, in an aesthetic, ecstatic experience and brought into paradise, where he overheard many wondrous and inexpressible secrets that were so sacred that no mortal is permitted to repeat them. I'm ready to boast of such an experience, but of my own good, I refuse to boast unless it concerns my weakness. However, if I were to boast, I wouldn't be ridiculous at all, for I would be speaking the truth, yet I will refrain, lest others think higher of me than what I demonstrate with my life and teaching. Now, these are people who, you see, one of the, the reason people boast in the emptiness and the nothings that are going on is because they really have not had true encounters. Okay, Tulu, can you just read from verse one? Mira. Okay, sir. It would be inappropriate for me to boast about anything as though I achieved this by my own doing. My confidence persuasion in what I have received by revelation of the Lord is not to be confused with arrogance. I know of an encounter in Christ 14 years ago where a person was translated into the third heaven. Only God knows whether it was in or out of the body. It does not really matter to me. This person was caught up into the paradise. There he heard words that could not be articulated into language. He understood a conversation that did not originate in human thoughts. The word Exosia has two components, ek, a preposition pointing to the origin of something, and me, I am. In this case, Paul refers to who I am as a human being. Of this encounter, I will confidently boast because it has nothing to do with anything that I did to promote myself. Mm. I would Rather glory in that which emphasizes my failure to get it right by myself. Divine revelation is a gift, not a reward. Even though I have legitimate reasons to boast, I prefer not to. My life speaks for itself, and I have nothing to hide. Amen. 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 Now, you see, why I wanted to see that place is because you will see that the higher you go in the realms and you begin to bust into the realms and you begin to break into some supernatural things, when we talk about visions, encounters, um, ecstasies, and all of that, all of these things are manifestations or they are the manifestation of... Huh, when we become... I'm trying to... When we become supernaturally natural or naturally supernatural, these things become a regular manifestation. Where you are in a place, you are discussing, but you are having two meetings at the same time. You are meeting with people in this realm. You are also having a discussion with people on the other realm. But guess what? I discovered that people on the other side, they do that a lot. And we call them let me to say, we call them Ogbanje, we call them Amiri and all of those kind of names. But you know that that is the kind of thing that we, that's the kind of personalities that we have. Where you are having dual meetings at the same time and you can articulate everything each parties are saying. Why? Because in your supernatural self, when fully unveiled, you can actually multi-locate. You can be in two places at the same time. We are not talking multi-location today. We are not talking bar location today. Today we are talking about the unveiling. Wow. 
You're talking about the unveiling of the supernatural you. I love this. Each time I teach of, about things like this, I begin to see movements in the room. I begin to see movements in the room. And right now, I'm seeing move, a lot of movement in the room. Where I normally sit, the Lord is seated there and is smiling at me, right? And honestly, I'm seeing, I'm seeing an image locked within him that I know I could relate with. I could relate with this image. So what Paul was saying in this place, said, there is, there's, there's a boast that we should boast about. You know, I don't know how people feel, ministers, children of God, that having tasted, maybe, maybe it's me, maybe I thought they tasted, they probably did not, because there is no man that would have tasted of the goodness of the Lord that would be seeking alternatives. It's not possible. You can't seek alternative. It's either this or it is this. No alternatives. When we start seeking, when people start seeking alternative, I'm convinced that it is not the God that I know that they know. I'm too convinced. So the unveiling, therefore, makes you to take a position in God. And you also open yourself up, up for God to take a position in you that cannot be shaken. They that know their God, they shall be as Mount Zion that cannot be moved. They cannot be removed. The Lord, I woke up this morning with a name in my spirit. Never heard it before. Most, some of you may have. Marilyn Hughes. I said, Marilyn Hughes. Okay. So I decided to, just when I was about talking on summoning, the Lord said, I gave you a name. Meet the person. So how do I meet the person? He says, search the person in the spirit. So I shut my eyes and I saw a screen come. And this screen was like an electronic encyclopedia. So he says, speak. So I called the name and the name appeared. Then I began to see her activities. I began to see her activities and I realized that she was actually a Catholic nun. The books she read, she wrote, the encounter she had, that's why I'm talking about this right now because it was talking about she had several, every encounter, she was having encounters with saints. She was having encounters with the Lord. How did it happen? She was having a constant out of body experiences and she would go and she would, she, would, she would travel in the realms of the spirit and she would meet people. But you know, she now brought, enough was following her walk, her walk and got to the one that they wanted me to see, talking about someone. One day they had given her, I'm telling the story that I heard this morning from her. One day they had given her a name and she has searched the spirit just like I was doing that morning and she couldn't locate the person. But the name was there. So they told her, why not mold the person? <laughs> so they started messing with um, clay and she molded a figure and all of a sudden, the clay came alive. 
And it was the person that she's been searching for in the spirit. Oh, God, God, God. Someone is not getting this now. <laughs> so the person she was, but you see, initially it looked like, so she now held the person because the person could not walk. So she held the person by the leg to help the person up. So she said two other people now appeared and they held the person by the shoulders to start moving the person until the person that eventually got, got strength. And she began to interact. This person was a mystic. My God. He was a mystic. Listen to this. He was a mystic that operated in meditations until he became one with the air. So the only way they could, she could have gotten in touch with him again was to cast up a body for him to re-enter. <laughs> So the person, so this man I began to teach her about the mystic activities happening in the heavens, the warfare that is going on. That the only way they could subdue and subjugate that warfare was to turn into the air so that they can use and command the elements of nature and the air to go into that warfare, even in the spirit. And that was when they started gaining victory. My God. As I read that, I said, wow. We don't know what we are up against. Or not up against. You don't, we don't know what we are, things that are prepared for us to come into so much that a human being meditated so much that he became part of nature. He entered into eternity and began to walk and spread around that you can't search him in encyclopedia. You have to enter into a realm. And as you are mentioning the name, what she was doing, she thought she was just messing with mud. And she created a body that this man will re-enter to rematerialize. <laughs> wow. Strange, mystical things. That is where God wants to get us into. That is why you can't. I remember during the lockdown, I was in Abuja with my wife. So the lady that was in my boss quarters, she's very fearful. She was very fearful. I want to believe that we're getting over that now. So um, the then there was this story about the one million boys that were breaking in. They were, they were literally write to, to S, they were writing to estates and they would tell the estates that they are coming to raid. Because there was no cash at the time, just make sure you have food in the house because those guys were hungry thieves. So if, you, if they come, they carry your pot of soup, whatever you have, and they eat it or they carry it out. So they wrote to our, our estate, and I was like, I said, so when she called me, say, ah, that the one million, boy. no, it was on our estate platform. And I called her, I said, you guys, I'm hearing that this is going to happen. Why not begin to shut it down? That is why you are there. <laughs> but see, she was so fearful, and she had a friend that came to stay with her. So that friend now said, ah, that she's going back to her place and all of that. But guess what? Listen to this. The Megad. Now told her, he said, if they come here, it's you that I'm feeling for. Say, because they will enter my room, I will be there, but they won't see me. Because all I need to do is to change to one of the objects in my room. I can become a cupboard. I can become a fridge. I can become a bed. I can become anything. 
So they will come, they won't see me, but I will be there looking at them. So I told her, I said, now, that person was, now this guy is a, is a believer, right? To the glory of God. But see, he said that that was what his father used to do. So he said he learned it. So he was telling her that, I don't know whether it is right to do it as a Christian, but, say, but if they come, they won't see me. Unfortunately, I didn't meet him by the time I got back, because by the time I got back, he had gained admission into school, so he had to leave. But listen to this. The guy said he can turn to table, he can turn to anything. So they'll be, and I told, I told that lady, I said, you are a believer. That guy is a young convert. You are supposed to be discipling him. But he's saying that. And you are even getting afraid of what he's saying. Instead of saying, oh yeah, sit down. We must learn that thing together. <laughs> we'll learn it together and we we'll align it in righteousness. How can somebody... I think it wasn't the one we were going to... to um, to Boko, somebody in the car was telling the story about how and a young man went to preach to the uncle who is in, in, in the court or something, in the occult, and he was saying, look, why not drop all of this since God is able to take care of you? He said, <laughs> Which God? The, your pastor, I sent him policemen to watch over him. But I also called my native doctor and I told him I will send policemen to protect you. And he said the native doctor almost cursed him. He said, you will, he said what, don't insult me again. You will send policemen to take care of me? Am I not the one that is giving you, that is giving you what is protecting you? You are sending policemen to me. He said, if not that you are my son, I would have dealt with you. He said, but your pastor accepted the police I sent. So I'm the one protecting your pastor. But this native doctor that you are saying, whatever, I sent the same policeman to, he rejected them, even wanted to deal with me for even mentioning it. Why? Because we do not know our true identity. And that is what this teaching is meant to do, to unveil to you the supernatural you. And how do you get into that? He said, we come with unveiled faces, beholding us in a mirror, the image of the Son of God. That image in itself, locked within that image, is the supernatural abilities of your personality. Locked within that image is the supernatural you that was created before the foundation of the world, that was created or that was in the mind of God before your parents came together. The, the, the supernatural you that was in the mind of God that looked like him, the supernatural you that when he said, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness and let them have dominion, that is the you that is being unveiled in that mirror. And you have been transformed into that image on a daily basis as you look to that image. You behold that image. You see the operations of that image. You see the, the, the movements, the, 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 the thoughts, the thought pattern, the, the way it moves, the way the image moves, the way it operates, the way it carries itself. When you begin to do everything that the image is doing, then you will break into everything supernatural that that image represents. That image is spiritual. That image is supernatural. That image is mystical. That image is revelational. That image is knowledgeable. That image is the image of wisdom. His wisdom himself. Wisdom is your person. Knowledge is your personality. Counsel is who you are. Might is who you are. The, you carry, your, your aura is the very fragrance of the fear of the Lord. 
Oh, you see, the Lord is permitting me, since I, the Lord is permitting us to meet people who are, and guess what, these, are, these guys are young converts. These guys are young converts. You know, you know, you know what, what I'm beginning to feel like? To reach out to people on the streets once again. But this time I will not make the mistake of getting them into the church. I look at my experiences in the field and I look at the testimonies coming out from those fields. It's, it's, it's frightening. And yet, the people in church who are hearing this word like back to back, there are some of you on this platform. You are on this platform. After this platform, in the evening, you are on another platform. And all of them, they are teaching you supernatural. What are you doing with it? What are you doing? Not you. What are we doing with it? For how long are we going to continue jumping from one place to another and yet we cannot manifest? We cannot understand even the speaking of the birds. When I was talking that birds would speak, birds speak, somebody posted a wonderful video on the platform where a bird was singing. You could look at the song. I used to say it, that the things we are receiving on this platform, I, will, I was praying that let it not be that people will come from afar and walk in this planet. I met somebody. She said she just came into faith in 2019, but look at she's taking this, she's taking the nation of Malaysia. She's taking the nation of Malaysia. There was something I shared here when I was talking about aligning your bloodline, the super search, go and make research, prayerfully make research, say, Lord, unveil my family bloodline to me. Those same things that, that we submitted ourselves to be, to be delivered from, go and study, get to know the supernatural aspect of those of your family, then align them in righteousness. This lady heard that teaching because I was talking about it in our ascensions because I knew that teaching came from a realm because somebody made a declaration that morning. And I was talking about it, so I just shared with you because when I got on our platform on Mercy Group um, Ascensions, they were talking about that became the topic. I actually got late that day. And so I now mentioned, I didn't want to say anything. But I just mentioned, then I said, please, can you send the link of the video? And this lady took it up. She said, my God. She started having from one encounter, gliding from one encounter to another. And I was, I was, I was bothered. I was bothered. Even the few people shared testimonies, but I was bothered that, my God, if somebody could take this. Meanwhile, on the platform of ministers, where that same thing was posted, it became a topic for argument. And somebody was using it to shut down the dragon in China. Because the mother of this lady is a dragon. Her mother, the mother that gave back to her, is a dragon, a high priestess. She had to align as she's of the Chinese and the Malaysian roots. After shutting down the gods in China, the Lord not told her, now it's time to go to Malaysia. And she got there, the thing she began to decrease now affecting the government. She would decree things and she go on the news and she's seen alignments taking place. That's how powerful you are. 
Oh, I want us for a moment, just unmute yourself and, and just pray and say, God, deliver me from the spirit of religion. That is the greatest deliverance you need. Unveil my mind. Unveil my heart. Unveil my face. Unveil my thoughts. Unveil my imaginations. Let me behold you as in a mirror. Let me see your image so that I may be transformed into that image. Unmute yourself and just for one minute, speak unto God. We have been taught corruption. We have been taught, oh God, we, we, we were given things, we were given assignments, we were given weights that began to weigh down on us so that the truth cannot find expression in us. Pray that Lord unveil me. Unveil your song. Let your song be revealed in me. Paul was saying that I could not, I had to tarry. I did not go to show myself to any man. I did not confer with flesh and blood until it pleased the one who found me in my mother's womb to reveal his spirit. Unveil. Remove this veil. I want to behold you with unveiled faces. With an unveiled face, I want to see you. I want to see you with, a, with bare face. I want to see with you face to see with you face to face. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. And God unveil your people. Excuse me. We can't continue. We cannot continue in the, with this religious mindset and think we'll go any, any, any further than we have gone. We can't. Our belief system, our Capacity to believe, our capacity to receive, to assimilate the things we hear is so small. One of the things I want, one of the assignments I want to give you is Lord, pray this prayer daily. Lord, activate my pineal gland so that I'll be able to assimilate in quantum bounds and leaps. The things that you are now pouring out and unveiling, the things that you are unpacking. Because serious unpacking is happening in the heavenlies. In case you do not know, let me interpret some of the things happening in the spirit that you are seeing, but you did not know that that was what was going on. The rumblings you see happen in the spirit, the movements you see happen in the spirit is because there is an urgency and they are unpacking things seriously. They are pouring down, down things. They are unveiling things. They are, they are releasing things. And guess what? The enemy is seeing it. And that's why you see that there is, there is a bold face implementation. That is like there is a bare face Manifestation, you know, in those days, people will hide to do certain things about witchcraft and all that. But no, now they have the school of sorcery. They have the school of wizards and witch, witch, uh, witches and wizards. They have the school of Satan. Of course, the school of astrology has been on since, but now they have the school that's specifically school of moon gazers have been following things as a god. And they all have their curriculum. The only people who do not have a clear curriculum are the children of the kingdom. Like I was saying last two weeks, only Morningstar University I have seen running such a kingdom curriculum where they are training children to engage at that level.
sit for those of you with teenagers. But because you do not, you have not engaged enough, that is why you cannot even teach them. But guess what? Let me let me unveil, let me unpack one secret for you. One of the ways you break into the supernatural is to teach your children the little that you know. Listen, don't teach your children deliverance. Because, please, I beg you. Don't teach your children deliverance. It irritates their spirits. Do you know why? There is a purity that is locked within them. Even though they do not understand, they are able to discern something that is not coming from the throne. They may say, yes, mommy, yes, daddy, but it irritates their spirit. It releases a false man that even they can't understand. But you try teaching them. Sit them down and say, come, we are going to practice. Do you know? Start from the small things. Do you know that you can interact with plants? Tell them, pray that Lord, train my ears to hear what the plants are saying to me. You will rouse, just that word, you have sown a big seed in them that will rouse in them a willingness to hear from the plants. Then tell them, hey, they should listen to the complaints of the plant. When the plant sees that you have a pure heart, they will relate with you because plants are, they are, Neutral portals. Do you know that plants can protect you? When you start interacting with plants, you just don't know that training you are giving your child could be all the child needs to save them in time of trouble. Because as they begin to interact with plants, a time will come when there is trouble. You find that the plants will come. They will say, come, run into us, run into us. And they run into them. They will shield them. Some of you have watched the Lord of the Rings. The Prince of Narnia. The Chronicles of Narnia, sorry. How that which you thought was standing will start interacting, will start moving. Start training your children. That is why as you speak to your environment, you are aligning your environment. A time will come when your environment will start embracing and covering you because they are rejoicing. This young lady or young woman she was saying that that tree is beckoning at me. They say you are mad. She became afraid to talk about such things. Then she hears me talking about it I had not interacted with her. And I thank God I had not as at the time. And she hears me talking about relating with plants and trees and all of that. She gets excited. That's when she opened up to start telling people about it. And she visits a home. The plants, the flowers are telling her they are, they are starved. They've not given them water. And you think you, you are eating the nature around you. You are not interacting with them. I remember the first time I heard the plant speak to me was when I went into bot uh, Botanical Garden in Lagos. It's owned by Motala Mohammed's wife. Very spiritual woman. 
So I, I normally would go there just to study the Bible. Then I was a Bible freak. So I was studying. All of a sudden, I felt a twitch on my right shoulder. And I looked. There was nobody. So I continued reading. Then I, I felt it again. I looked. Nothing. It was plants. Flowers all over. I felt a twitch. This time it was stronger. Like this time it pinched me. So I now turned. And I looked. And I saw that the, this particular plant, amongst the rest, was looking miserable. But it smiled at me. But you could see the the you could see the face. All of a sudden, it had a face, and he said to me that it was being oppressed. I looked around. He said, "It's me. I'm talking." He said, "I'm being oppressed." So I now say, "Okay, what? Why? How?" He said, all of these plants, they are pressing it. So it's not getting enough water. That is why it's looking miserable amongst them. I said, ah. So I got up immediately. I went to search for the manager. The manager wasn't around. I now met the owner. And I said, man, please come. So I said, this plant just told me that it's been oppressed. I thought I was prepared to be called names because even me too, I wasn't sure what was happening to me. And you know what? To my surprise, you must say, oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. That from that day, they gave me free access to be coming into the garden. So immediately, she did not waste time. Immediately, she called the gardener bring my gloves, she wore her gloves and she just did what she did and rooted out that plant and took it to another place. And the plants, she said the plant told her where she will be, where she will be better, where she will better grow. By the time I got back there in two weeks, I did not recognize that plant. It was doing so well. So when I got there, how I recognized it was because it recognized me. And it bowed and was saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. Then I didn't know anything supernatural. Though. I was just doing my own. The supernatural I knew was before I got saved. They had told me that you don't do that, that all of those things that you are doing and you are is because of where you are coming from. So now I was confused. Is it God? Is this godly or is this from where I'm coming from. But I got to know the woman is a Christian and the way she thanked me. So I now have someone called to go talk to her that this thing that happened is it normal? He said, yes, that means talk. That don't, she now took me, he said, don't you know that? Look at, he said, God did not allow everything that he has already created, the plants and everything. He said, they did not spring out of the ground. He said, because the Lord had not caused it to rain. Why? Say because there was no man, which means it is the man being ready that allows the rain to come. And then it is when the rain comes that the plants will spring up. He now said, he now placed the man to tend. Do you know what it means to tend? You cannot tend plants correctly if you are not interacting with the plants. The plants must feel your love. The, you, the plants, you must be connected to the plants. So it's like nature. If you are not connected to the nature, you cannot do anything under that atmosphere. Am I saying something to somebody this afternoon? Is it afternoon? Yeah, this afternoon. Wow, time is flying. Is my time correct? You're kidding me. You say you cannot connect with the power in the air. You cannot connect. He said, said, nature will not cooperate with you except you first connect with nature. That was the first time I got to know. And now that's showing me, she showed me the shapes of plants and everything and the fruits. I said, my God. 
So when the time came by the 2016, how many years later? Was it 20, sorry, 2018, 2017, 2018, when the Lord began to teach me about fruits? How many years later? Almost 20 years after that experience, the Lord took me back to that garden, and I have been I've trans, I've been transported severally into that garden to see the lessons. That was my foundation, but I did not know it because at that time, religion, the veil of religion was still on my face. Why? Because they had told me these things you are doing is because of where you are coming from. May people not use your past to shut down your presence. May people not use what they knew about you, the information, the little information they knew about that, that were too high for them to understand. They now use it with their religious mindsets to interpret your present and thereby limit your advance in the realms of the spirit. I pray this, this afternoon that the Lord will unlock the gates of spiritual advancement unto you that will break, it, break you off from every limitations in the name of Jesus. Whether you say amen or not, I have released it because before I came into the meeting, I have prayed into your realm. So you, it, is, it, it saturates the environment. It, such, it pierces deep into your, your, your innermost being. And you will bask in it. You will walk in it. Your sonship shall be unveiled. Your glory will be revealed. Your personality in Christ, that which he created you to be, will be made manifest in the name of Jesus. You will see, you will hear, you will grow, you will blossom, you will be well-rounded. And when, when they see you in this plant, watch out for those of you who will start practicing this. Look, Madam Jane Jayasri, you, I, I think it has started happening because I'm seeing certain things around you. We have plants will see you, they will, you will literally see that they are rejoicing. And you look around you, you see that no other, no other plant is jubilating like that. Why? Because they recognize your sonship. Then somebody was sharing with us on Monday when we came. She was talking about one time that she was praying around her, the, the, her, the, the what they call it, the mall. And the plants, when she got to play, the plants were rejoicing. And there was no wind any other place. It was only there. What they recognized as sonship. Listen. The warfare that we are engaging right now, I'll come back to it because that's where, I'll close with this. That's where the lesson is today. Um, Marilyn Hughes. The warfare that is ongoing in the spirit now is a warfare that if we don't connect with nature, we will lose the battle. It's the warfare that you supernatural you must be unveiled unto nature for nature to see you, connect with you, then they will cooperate with you and they will take territories. And when you speak to them, you will find that things will begin. To, you now begin to see when it says that this, this, the, the sun, the moon, fire, vapor, hail, stormy winds, attending to the word of the Lord. The attendance of the word of the Lord, remember that we beholding as in a mirror the image of the Son of God. Who is the Son of God? The word of God. So they attend to the word of God. When they see you, all of this nature, elements, the elements of, na the elements of nature, the natural elements, storm, stormy winds, thunderings, the, the sun, the star, the moon, all of them, they begin to attend to you because you are now a manifest and unveiled or an unveiling manifestation of the word of God. So don't just read the word of God, become the word of God because that is your design. By design, you were meant to be the word of God, the manifest, the manifestation of his personality. So that particular passage, beholding with unveiled faces, 
we are changed into that same image, into that same image. We are being transformed into Christ. We are being transformed into the world. We are being transformed into his personality. His personality is manifested in supernatural operations. You cannot become that image you cannot be transforming. You cannot be translating from one level of glory, the various, the various glory manifestation of that image. You, it's not possible for you to be entering one level onto, uh, onto another without naturally manifesting in the supernatural. So the unveiling and the unpacking of every, sorry, the, unveil, the emptying of everything that have limited you as you behold, those things, they begin to neutralize. They melt, they melt, they melt. And if he's forming, he's forming, he's forming, he's forming, he's forming, he's forming. A day will come when your face will be so bright that men cannot recognize you because you enter into the fullness of the supernatural you. God is saying this is the set time. This is the time when he wants to reveal himself in you. This is the set time when he wants to make himself known through you. This is the set time when he wants to introduce himself to the world through you. This is the time, the set time. When nature will see you and they will bow and they will cooperate, they will say, the people that we've been expecting, they are beginning to emerge. Start it from your home. Start the fellowship of sons. We've played church. We've played religion for far too long. Let's now manifest our sons. Listen carefully. I'll round up with, I'll, I'll end with this now. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. One of the things I saw today, or that I know it's a class they are taking me into, that for, for God to have given me that name, it's a class he's taking me into. One of the things I saw today, I was shown today, is because, like I said, the, 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 the word summoning, summoning, summoning have been rousing in my spirit. If I had done, if I had done on scripture last week, it would have titled, it would have been titled either the summoning or the summon. Today again, I wanted to, but it directed me to, they redirected me in the spirit to go there by giving me that name. So one of the things I learned today is the power to summon. And guess what? Somebody will be coming to visit me today. He said to me, he said the father told him that I named you and summoned you in the spirit. Do you know what that means? Now, these are people who don't, they have not aligned with, with God, but they know the power of summon. But look at, let me show you one of the things that have limited our advance in the spirit. Show you. And take, and I'm going to use this commonest thing, the very simple thing, prayer. Prayer. When we pray, take for example, Let's say, let's say I saw a vision where God says, I'm going to, hmm, where now? I'm going to South Africa. Hmm? All right. So you go to South Africa in two weeks. Full stop. Two weeks. I need to process my visa. 
Yeah? Now, I don't have money for tickets. And two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. You know how much the air flight is going to cost in two weeks? Now, I don't even have the funds. There are hotel bills and everything to be paid there. I don't know anybody there, but it doesn't say you are going in two weeks. What will come to my mind naturally is that God has raised somebody that will take care of it. Do you know what I've done? I have already taken God out of the picture. The God element just got neutralized or got limited by bringing man, the force of man, into it. But look at this. God says, son, you'll be going to South Africa in two weeks. Thank you, Lord. Lord, what, what and what do I need? Pack your bags and just get ready. So I pack my bags and I get ready. Do you know what I'm looking for? I'll be looking for, I'll just be looking forward to the tickets, the funds and everything. Why? He said, pack your bags and get ready. I'll pack my bag and get ready, just waiting for the announcement. Lord, am I flying? If he says yes, then I'm waiting for the ticket. So somebody asking, ah, if you are not flying, how else will you go? Aha. Uh -huh. Now it's getting exciting, right? Now, because I say, Lord, okay, I pack my things and I'm waiting. Guess what? If he wants me to fly, I will fly. But it's not compulsory that I fly. Who told you I must fly to South Africa? Who told you I must fly in a plane to South Africa? Who told you that I can't fly with my own wings to South Africa? And who told you? That I can't close my eye and wake up. I can't go to bed one night and one, wake up the following morning and I'm in South Africa. Who said so? The Lord says, you'll be paying, I'll bring the funds. You'll be paying for your house rent or you'll be paying your bills. So you are waiting. What comes to mind is that God is going to bring one business. God is going to bring, I, that happened to me a lot when I was, when I was still doing business. Maybe that's why the Lord got angry and decided to disgrace me in businesses to shut me down. Because the Lord will say, look, I will give you this. The next thing, I'm already looking for businesses that will come. As soon as the business did come, brah, I said, okay, this is the one. So I, why? Because I believed that if God says he's going to provide money, it then means um, he will give me something that I will do to provide the money. Who said so? He said he will provide. It's not your business how he provides. What if he says, as you are walking, go by the sea, by the river, a fish will come out. When it comes out, tell the fish, open your mouth and collect what you see inside. Who says that a dog Cannot bring something and deliver at your at your at your at the door at your doorstep. You will start binding and losing, right? Who says the wind cannot blow the forms that you need? And who says that you can't get into that plane? You can't walk past all the checkpoints without ticket and walk into the plane and land South Africa. Who says you can't do that? And Am I witnessing something in us by these questions? Who says that you must go out to the supermarket to buy things before you have provisions in your house? Have you not heard? You that have no money, come buy and drink. Is it not confusing? You don't have money yet. They are inviting you to come and buy and drink. Do you know what they are saying? They say, come with your faith. Come with the currency of the kingdom. Come with the currency of the kingdom. Come buy, drink. All you need is the faith exchange. I remember a testimony of a young of a man who the Lord has showed him that he will work in a particular bank. He went to resume with them. 
And he resumed with them, was, will resume. He was always the first to be in the office and he will stay at the reception till they close. He will close with them. He did that for two weeks. And by the second week, the MD that does not normally take walk through the reception walked, said, this young man, what is he doing here? Oh, he's been coming. We don't know who he's looking for. Uh -uh. And you'll be letting him sit down. And when the, who are you looking for? He said, I, I came to resume work. You came to resume work. Yes. And I've been coming for the past two weeks. You know what? They checked his CV. They gave him employment. He started work that day. When they were to pay him, those two weeks that he was coming, he got the salary. Why? They told him, that's where you work. But you, you start looking for connection. Do you have anybody there? You have God. That is why the people, the crop of people that God is now unveiling, they are a crop of people who believe God and they be believe God in their innocence. They are radical about their belief. Sometimes even to their detriment. Never seek alternatives, no plan B in this realm of our work with God. I pray that the Lord will give us wisdom. I speak into your life that everything that had veiled your mind, veiled your heart, veiled your eye, veiled your understanding, that would be an unveiling so that there would be a revelation of your personality in Christ. Now that image that you will start beholding, your eyes will be open, open to see clearly, your ears will be open to hear clearly what he's saying to you. Let me just drop this. It's a hint. I won't give details. The places where you thought God is, I shock you, God is not there. Remember the experience of Elijah, the wind, the storm, the fire, then the still small voice. The still small voice may not pull crowds but it carries the presence. Which one do you want? The crowd or the presence? The decision is yours. Bow your heads and let us pray. Let's talk to God. I ask you a simple question. Which one do you want? The crowd, the fame, or the presence? Those, who are, those with the popular names or the presence? It's your choice. I pray today that you that is willing that is crying, that is hungry, that the Lord will reveal himself to you. He will become your teacher. He will take you by the hand. He will lead you on in glory pathway that will bring you to the place of life. I pray that the supernatural you will be unveiled for the world to see. That by reason of your unveiling, that these signs shall begin to follow you. The plants will respond to you. The birds will respond to you. The animals will respond to you in a very positive sense, such that sometimes you will hear your name and you open a window. You open your window and you will see a bird beckoning at you. And they will say, we came to worship with you. You wake up in the middle of the night, your room will be filled. The King of Oku will bear witness to this. Your room will be filled with the presence of God, with drums, and they will dance. Serious disco, <laughs> heavy sound. Heavy sound will invade the atmosphere, yet the next person may not hear it, except they too have entered into the supernatural. I know somebody, he will dream, the brother will dream, the same dream. Meanwhile, he's in the US, the brother is in Nigeria. I pray today that this, um, this thing will be unveiled to you. Everything that the Lord had had arranged for you, there will be an unpacking of those things and you will see them with your plain eyes in the name of Jesus. You will grow in strength. You will grow into the supernatural. You will grow into realms. You will grow into the operation. These things will become your natural self in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord increase the oil upon your head. The Lord increase the oil of wisdom, the oil of knowledge and understanding until you enter into the fullness of everything that he has ordained for you to embrace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God honor his name in your life.
and cause his face to shine upon you. In every place that you are, the supernatural will break out, not just in your life, but through you, into your children, into your neighborhood. Every plant, you see, these days I'll be carrying nature along because, listen, I want to engage nature. If a man can so engage the supernatural that he turned into the air, which means that man, that man, that man is alive. He's not dead. He entered into immortality. And you can bring him back by molding his image. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Hi, oh no God. This, this, this thing is sparking my head. You, we will grow, we will catch up. I say we will catch up. Eh? Madam Jane, we shall catch up. Madam Josephine, Madam Sidi, Zimpi, we, we don't get choice. We shall catch up. We must catch up. I mean, Apostle Ike, Kefira, Madam Myris, we shall catch up. Busola, we have to catch up. We don't, we don't have a choice in this matter. David, you see, we must catch up and we will catch up in the name of Jesus. Rhoda, we don't have a choice in this matter. We must catch up. This thing cannot elude us. Gift. We it cannot we we enter, we will break through. We are the people of the end time. If they entered in their time, say the, 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 the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. We will enter greater, we will press in, we will get there, we will break into this thing and we will unveil it, we will tear it to pieces, and we will bring it down. It will become a natural manifestation. Do you understand what I'm saying? Eh? She does say, we shall enter this thing. We will explore this thing. We will explore. Uh, explore. Funola, Tony, we shall explore this thing. Ele Morgan, we will explore it to the fullness until there is an explosion of his almightiness wherever we go in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. Amen and amen. Bye-bye. I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, sir. God bless, sir. Thank you.